you just wrote a memoir yourself, and then the film, it's different ways of looking at your own life, right? I believe with all my heart we are versions of each other. And what we need to do is understand one another better as versions of each other, every single human being that walks the face of the earth, the worst. Uh, you know, we are, each of us as human beings, capable of everything or anything else any other human being is capable of. And uh, if I wish this to say anything, and I think it does, it speaks to that. And I, I love you both for this. Tell, me, tell us, um, Heidi and Rachel, obviously a lot of rich material you had to work with, obviously an influential and important life, but what led you to it? Why did you want to tell it? And also, how did you think you could add something to what has been out there before? We read his memoir, the galleys of the memoir before it came out, and you know we were kind of sold. It was it's a good story. It's a good story. It's an American story. It's the story of, um, you know, dialogue in America in this public forum. It's it's a it's a great story, and um, we um, met him and somehow convinced him and his. Was was that hard, by the way? I mean, what, what well, was, was that little, conversation? A teeny, tiny bit of stalking, not too much, just a little bit, not too much. A little stalking, but um, we, you know, it, Rachel and I, are, most of our work is observational, uh, verite filmmaking, and so most of our films take place in corners of the United States that maybe you haven't been to. We like, put cameras on those who have never been filmed, and so we're always sort of uh, in the, the hidden story. So this was completely new for us. Um, we'd never been interested in the biography genre and hadn't uh, ever gone down the road of any film about or surrounding the concept of celebrity. So for us, creatively, it was a, a big, giant leap. Uh, but we had met Norman, and the story was really rich. And it's not just the work. It's not just the shows. It's not just the highlights or the hits. Um, the, the, we were very taken by your personal story and by how it related to the work. And um, also the opportunity to um, you know, hear a, your perspective for all these 94 years. It's very, very rare. Um, to have that on the screen. And the fact that it hadn't been done seemed like a crime. Um, and I know you hadn't been ready until the moment we came along. So it was really a lot of circumstances that collided at the same, same moment. And then Rachel and I had to go about and figure out aesthetically how we would do a biography that would do justice to this man and his story and in a style that we were happy with. So actually for us, it was a 100% departure creatively from anything that we have ever done and, and that we might do in the future. So so it was really exhilarating to, to, to make the film on that level as well. The boy. That is an interesting storytelling device, very different from anything uh, that, done That nine-year-old boy is alive and well of me today. Mm -hmm. The most exciting thing about being 94 is the understanding that the vertical journey into oneself never ends. I've had insights in the last week. Uh, I mean, uh, the truths about myself and my life and and life around me and my country and my world and so forth. Uh, that vertical journey never ends. And that nine-year-old boy, I react like that nine-year-old boy to lots of things today. And I, I feel like, you know, the movie is called Just Another Version of You for a Reason. I think we can all identify, I identify with that. I, I sometimes react in a certain way or I'll um, find myself being childlike unintentionally. I'm like, oh, that's the Heidi that climbed a tree at 11 and wouldn't do this. And I mean, it happens to all of us. So why should it not happen at 94? And that was something that we, we did learn. So the, to answer your question, we came by it honestly in the sense that um, just in talking to Norman and getting to know him, um, we would see flashes of that kid across this face that has some wrinkles on it. And it was liberating. And we're like, well, what if we have a little alter ego that runs through the film now and then? What if, and it's whimsical. And um, we just started playing with the concept. And, and then it became what you see on the screen. It wasn't like we set out to do anything specific. Uh, but it sort of organically, we came to this uh, concept. There's another aesthetic thing that we did, which is you see people watching 
we're watching people watch the clips back. And we got that because Norman, um, in his book, and also he says a lot that he used to stand in the back watching All in the Family and watch people do that belly laugh and that, that motion of laughter when a whole audience you know, bends over and laughs and that he used to watch an audience watch the show inspired us to film people as they watch the clips. We tried it, and it was extremely rich and emotional to be there with someone. It was so intimate to watch Rob Reiner see something he hadn't seen in 40 years. And so, again, these things, we tried them, and what worked, we continued to do. And a lot of it was inspired by, by just getting to know Norman. Amy Poehler makes a joke about this in the, in the film, that we no longer really live in this age of mass media, right? that the kinds of, the, the shows that you were having that seen by m huge audiences does not exist anymore other than perhaps the Super Bowl, but certainly not on, on regular uh, uh, evening television. Does, does that strike you as a, um, a good thing, a bad thing? What, 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 do, you, what do you think about the, the new world of media? Well, where my head goes with that question is, you know, we have everything in excess. And uh, there's, this is the golden age uh, of television, of content. But to be a, a human being with, with, with sufficient time to be entertained and find, and this is true of me, I cannot keep up with everything people I respect tell me I should be seeing. There's just too much. And there's too much of everything. Uh, everything except uh, waking up in the morning. You can never have too much of that. <laughs> Is there anybody here that doesn't like that? <laughs> of course, for filmmakers, it, uh, it gives you more opportunities to, uh, to place your things, right? To create films, create, uh, and have outlets for it. It's a great time to making docs. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to complain about the two. I mean, there's more opportunities to, as creators of docs than we were when Rachel and I came up. Um, and people are finding them. Even if they find our films like three years later on Netflix or something, they're finding them. So, but we don't make 13-part series. So we make handmade things for years at a time, and then we get it out in the world. So it's a different pace than I think what Norman's referring to. You know, to. the only person in the film that you, you didn't overlook, but you didn't really tell us anything about is my mother. Why? Good question. What was wrong with Rachel, my... would you like to answer wrong that question? <laughs> I'll tell you why they didn't do it. Phew. Because they waited for this moment tonight. <laughs> to think about so it. So I could tell you about my mother. Yeah. <laughs> That's how kind they were. Always digging us out of a hole, Norman. When, my, when I got a call a good many years ago, uh, to tell me on a Sunday morning that uh, the Academy of Television Arts and Science had met the day before. They were going to start a Hall of Fame. And uh, there were seven inductees, and they were all major people. And one of them included me. And I called my mother in Bridgeport, Connecticut, to tell her I had just been inducted into the Hall of Fame, the first Hall of Fame. And she said, listen, if that's what they want to do, who am I to say? <laughs> so they had the opportunity to, to reflect on the greatest narcissist I ever knew. Uh, but they deliberately didn't do it so I could tell you that tonight. <laughs> and also they because wanted to give me that Exactly. And when you're not around, I tell that story and it kills every time. So thank you for that. <laughs>